Hey everybody, thanks for joining today's NTOP Live about orthopedic lattice basics. Uh, today's session will be about the basic lattice design workflow that one can typically expect to see and use when designing lattices for osseo integration. Now, the classic NTOP uh, design workflow for orthopedics is, is fairly intuitive and consists of four major steps. And we'll be walking through each of these steps so you can get a better understanding of what it's like to use NTOP platform for this application. Um, the very first step is to import your CAD bodies. And even though we do take in native SOLIDWORKS part files and step files and the like, uh, the most important format to work with is actually the parasolid. So typically the main form and net shape of your implant design is created in your traditional CAD tool and each part configuration is normally exported as a separate multi-body parasolid file. And you can see that being referred to here in the path pointing to that parasolid. So right here is gonna be that acetabular cup. And if we dig into the properties of this imported part, we can see that there are actually two bodies designated as body zero and bodies one. Um, it's not immediately discernible which of these is which. So the best way to interact with this is actually in the 3D environment. And you can see that I can select the body that's intended to be the solid region. And I can also separately select the body that's intended to be the lattice design region. Now, as a note, uh, this works for a two body solid pretty effectively. Uh, but if there is a possibility for your arrangement or assembly to be a bit confusing, um, it's also possible to manage these regions as distinct bodies and import them separately. So in this example, I actually have the same exact part but I chose to kind of export the two discrete bodies as two separate parasol files and then import them into NTOP as two separate blocks. So this one right here represents the solid and this one right here represents the lattice design space. Um, there are minor nuances between uh, these importing strategies, but at the end of the day, the results should be the same and it typically comes down to preference. Um, so as you may have heard, uh, and top platform is a fast and powerful design solution because it leverages implicit design technology and thus represents the geometry as an implicit body. Uh, because there are two imported CAD bodies here, uh, the next step would be to convert those to implicit. And that can be easily done by double clicking on each body, right clicking them, and then choosing the convert CAD body to implicit body option in this little menu. With each selection and conversion, uh, you can see that the new green blocks appear, each representing their respective converted implicit bodies. And for good housekeeping, we're gonna rename them as such. So we're gonna call this our solid region and we're gonna call this our lattice design region. Um, as another note, uh, because the acid tab of the cup is circular in nature, you may find that the default tolerance level for this kind of conversion might be too low at 0 0.01. Uh, so what I like to do is typically bump this number down to 0 0.001 for each of these so that it can more accurately capture the curvature of the geometry itself. Now, normally this is the fun part. Uh, this is the step where you kind of explore and design all the different ways that NTOP platform can create a lattice structure for osseo integration. And there are so many unique ways to tailor and characterize that structure to meet your specific application and design criteria. So let's change this color up super quick. Um, for the sake of brevity, I'm going to pull out a design workflow that I already have created. Right, so I can search for this trabecular lattice workflow that's already been done. And this design workflow is a customized workflow that I have already put together and it's been packaged into this single convenient block. All I have to do is populate the inputs with the correct values, the preferred values that I think will create the best structure for what I'm trying to create. And even though NTOP platform makes available different kinds of these pre-made lattice generation capabilities, such as this in the form of toolkit blocks, and we can find some of those up here uh, under the architected materials tab, maybe run through the latticing section of the ribbon, right? These all exist as toolkit blocks. 
Um, however, I have chosen to create my own custom lattice design workflow and package it up for my own usage. And as a medical device designer in Mtal platform, um, you'll be able to do the exact same thing. You characterize your unique osseointegrative structure, you'll standardize your design process, and then ultimately you'll package up your workflow uh, for revision control and reusability. And we can see that it's now finished. And we can see that lattice, lattice structure uh, generated where that lattice design region was. If I change the color of that super quick, you can see how it stands out from the solid region behind it. Just a little bit more visual clarity there. Um, so the fourth and final step actually is to combine your lattice and solid region together and create a mesh that can be read by your preferred additive manufacturing machine or 3D printer. And this normally can take a bit of time, ranging from a few seconds to a few minutes, but also for the sake of brevity, I have the regions already combined and that mesh already created. So if I zoom in super quick, I can get an idea of what my mesh actually looks like in terms of triangle size and mesh quality. And if I look over to the left, we can actually see kind of a color coded flow representing the steps we've taken from CAD bodies to implicit bodies to creating a lattice, combining it using a Boolean operation and ultimately generating a mesh from that. Um, but meshing itself is not always a one click process. Depending on your geometry and application, uh, there's gonna be many different knobs and dials that need to be fine tuned to really get the most efficient mesh that both accurately represents your part, but also has an optimal file size. So in some circumstances, uh, the meshing strategy can be entirely different. In this variant that I have pulled up, you'll notice that I actually use a voxel grid meshing approach. And the mesh itself looks a little bit different. If I zoom in on here and show those triangles, you'll see that the way the triangles are created and the way the geometry is, is kind of recognized in that meshing algorithm, it's different from what we saw before. Uh, each approach serves its own purpose and they each come with their own sets of parameters that can be tweaked to output the best results uh, for your needs. Uh, now, the other detail you'll notice is that I have meshed just the lattice structure here and not the solid region. Uh, some 3D printers uh, have different centering or melting profiles for different regions, solid versus lattice structures. So in those cases, it may be necessary to mesh the lattice structure and the solid region independently and provide those to your machine separately. Uh, though everything I said before is what you'd expect from a standard workflow, uh, NTOP platform offers many different ways to tailor the geometry for your unique needs. So one of the ways that can be done is by selectively introducing gradients into your geometry. Uh, in this example right over here, one of the many different variations I have for the trabecular surface structure that's uh, you know, on this cup, I have this graded randomized lattice. Right, and what the gradient here is impacting is actually the density of the pores. So with denser lattice pores focused specifically around the holes, it potentially serves as a form of reinforcement when this material is eventually drilled out on a CNC and threaded at a later point in time. This may not be immediately pertinent to what you're trying to do exactly, but it's just a way to kind of introduce some forethought into your design process as well as some unique aspects uh, for your company's product line. Uh, the last point I'd like to leave you with on is the idea of reusability. Even though the process that we stepped through was shown on an acid tabular cup, the design process was put together in a way where it was geometry agnostic. Uh, this means that if we were to change the inputs from the bodies of an acid tabular cup with the bodies of a tibial tray, we should expect to see a lattice with the same exact characteristics generated on this brand new part. So we can see that even though the rest of the file looks exactly the same, the imported part now refers to components of a tibial tray. So we are reusing the same workflow on different files. And the beauty of designing uh, your orthopedic implants in this manner is not just that the complex lattice geometry is kind of fast to generate, really easy to handle, 
Um, but the design workflow is scalable across entire part families or fundamentally different product lines. And the next step from here is to just introduce automation, batch processing, and we got a seamless human free design workflow that just works over and over again. Obviously, what I've shown you today is really not intended to be a uh, some somewhat of a be all and end all solution when it comes to designing osseo integrative lattices uh, for your medical devices uh, there are many ways to go about this within npal platform and this is just merely one example with one structure on a handful of designs uh, but this has just been a showcase of what ntop can offer as a design platform to create these orthopedic design solutions that do work for your specific parts and your specific product lines